What's up everyone? If you don't know who I am, my name is Sylvan Gassi, the ultimate Springbok fan. My life is so amazing, I even get paid to be a Springbok fan. I have a guest with me today. If you don't know who he is, it's Kieran Williams. If you don't know him, check this out. Once again, the Springboks have done it and they cheated their way through the whole game. This is an embarrassing result for South Africa. There's not a team on this planet I hate more than the South Africans. I can't stand them, their fans, everything. It doesn't sit right with me. And after Ireland lost, this really doesn't sit right with me. How did we lose that? How did we lose that? They were not even good in the game. They just weren't good. Honestly, it, this rattles me. I, am, I think I'm going to delete my account. I think I'm going to delete my account. The ref handed them the game. It's actually disgusting how the ref just gave them that game like that. What's up, Kieran, brother man? How are you? How are you? Wait, we are the champions, my friend. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, my friend. You've been very busy, you know, crazy World Cup. But yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this, um, for this conversation. It's going to be good. I've been looking forward to the whole World Cup. The whole World Cup has been mental. So you have built a career on hating on the first team to ever be four-time world champions. They've won it twice in a row. They have been absolutely unbelievable. They say the next documentary is going to be chasing the one because they have won the quarterfinals by one, the semifinals by one, and the final by one. Tell us about your love, your hate of the spoon box. Okay, so it kind of started ages ago, and uh, I was on a podcast with my friends, and we just talked about it. And then since 2019, the final, I remember losing that, that final in Japan, and I was genuinely distraught. I couldn't get over it. And then as the as the years went on, I was just like, I really want to beat the Springboks. I really want to beat them. And it came to this fight. It came to the, the semifinals, and then the quarterfinals. I loved Ireland, but I wanted South Africa in the semifinals. And then when we got beaten, it's like another four years of hurt. But no, it's the whole hype around the whole country has been incredible. But yeah, the, 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 I wouldn't call it hate, I call it more of rivalry. So I, I've loved your rivalry with us. It was like the spring box made your wife pregnant. It is like, it's like you were married and then they impregnated your wife. But we were loving the banter. But for how, so that's, that's how it got about. So, so you don't really hate the spring box. No, I don't. I don't hate the Springboks. I don't hate their country. I think it's a beautiful country. I love the. I love the rugby you guys produce. I just love the rivalry. We need it more in sport. We need the competitiveness between countries. And if I was able to do that, the World Cup, it only increases rugby. But South Africa, credit to them because I. I went against them for months, months. I said they weren't going to win it. I said they're going to go out in the groups. I said they're going to go out in the quarters, the semis, and then the final when they won it by a point. Damn, I was like, wow, my life is, I, I, I can't get away from this now. I've said what I said. So have you actually been to South Africa? I have. 2018, I came to South Africa. Um, Lansley, Cape Town, did the garden route along the bottom. Yeah, finished in Port Elizabeth. So yeah, it's was, it was honestly a beautiful country when I went there. So before the World Cup, who was your prediction to win the particular uh, World Cup? Who did you predict was going to win? I wanted England to win, but I thought Ireland were going to win. Not world number one. I believed the hype. I followed the train. I knew that Ireland were going to win this World Cup. Part of me knew the quarterfinal curse was going to get them out. I was, I was. It was in the back of my mind. I was supporting Ireland. Everyone knew it. Everyone knew I was supporting Ireland. They went out of the groups. Damn, my phone just blew up. I just, I became a meme everywhere. It was, it was, yeah, it was wild. So you picked the wrong green. You picked the wrong green. I was in France uh, and yeah. watched them get knocked out. I knew they were in trouble when they started singing during the haka. And I was like, yeah. oh, here it goes. Here it goes. So what do you think Ireland did wrong to get knocked out? What do you think England did wrong to get knocked out? I, I don't know how to describe how Ireland got knocked out. The only way I can do it is just they're not a World Cup team. Some teams are just not made for big competitions for eight, six, seven games, right? So I think... I think Ireland just on a team that can compete like uh, week after week after week. And South Africa and New Zealand, they've got it embedded into, their, in, into them that they've got to win World Cups. That's where they are. They might not produce rugby for two years. They might go a bit, you know, they might not be the best team. But when they turn up at a World Cup, you can see how like united the country has been now. They've got behind them. And I think South Africa know how to win big World Cups. I just think Ireland don't have that 
like almost like a fire in them and a switch to win that World Cup. How about, do me a favor, go through the worst comments you've received from South Africans. Because I know South Africans can be the most vile humans online. I know they will threaten your mother, your mother's mother, and your mother's 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 mother, and the unborn child of your mother's mother, of your mother's mother's father's mother. Yeah. So go through some of the so of things that South Africans have said. And I'm sure Afrikaners, every part of the Officers were writing Kosa to you in Zulu, in Tswana, in every 11 official language. I'm sure you have received abuse. What's your best abuse of you receiving South Africans? Because we're masters at abusing people. I think the worst one I've received is when I said I pranked South Africans so I was coming into Cape Town. Then I remember people telling me to come to Cape Flats, all these different places, all the, and I, I searched up. I searched up before. I knew what was, I was walking into. Um, but no, like, yeah, I think a lot of them, yeah, I'm not going to repeat some of the stuff they said, but damn, like, they, they did not. No, no, like, please, <laughs> please repeat. Because for me, when I saw your post saying you're coming to the Cape Blacks, I retweeted and I said, no, you must come to Nyanga, the murder capital of South Africa. You would have been a hit, <laughs> literally a hit. Look, okay, okay, let's go through some, okay, let's go through some things that people said. Come on, we have to, we have to. Yeah, you've said, I, 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 I can't, can't. go on, do you think of any? Like, I think, I think a lot of them are just me, like. Yeah, the death threats would be wild. They like they said it. Yeah, can't... curry. Like yeah. curry. Like I, I heard an Indian person say they will never eat curry again because of curry. Like uh, when curry accused Bongi of say, calling him a cunt. Uh, even the, even the Indians were going, "We'll never touch curry again." It was intense. It was intense. Uh, you are like uh, a puss kind of thing. Like, that's ah! the the Is that all? They called you a puss. Ah, no. I'm sure they called you worse, and you didn't even read it. No, I. <laughs> I can't think of the top of my head, but yeah. So, wow. I mean, they didn't all they didn't hold back. Some of them were just wild. I mean, I've had people tell me like, "Don't come to South Africa, you won't make it out." Uh, all these different <laughs> things just been crazy, honestly. Let me let me tell you something about South Africans. We have a big bark, but there's no bite. You would have arrived, they yeah. hugged you and loved you, and had a flipping bra with you to eat meat. All right, how has the reaction been from your people in England towards the kind of chips that you've been getting? I, I mean, I, I've been. I went out on Saturday after the World Cup final, um, and I I went into a bar, and the, uh, it's called All Stars where I live. And essentially, I got recognised when I went in there. They were like, "Oh, can I buy you a beer? Can I buy you a beer? I love your content, all this." So, like in England, it's very, very calm. Like people just go, "Oh, it's just you." Like I know you. I, I went. Um, I was in. Uh, I went into another bar, and I tried to get uh, my ID out. We have IDs. Yeah. I went up to the bouncer and I said, "Can I, can I give you my ID?" He was like, "I know who you are. Go, go in, my friend. Like, go straight in." I was like, "Wow, that's wild." But um, very different. You can see the English side, and then you got the South African side is miles apart. Let me tell you something about South Africans. So that we and for the reason why I thought no one stood a chance against us this World Cup is because the country has been going through so much shit that the players were playing for more than rugby, like. For me, like, like, for example, Ireland, even for me, I, I, there was a point when I was like, Ireland's going to win this. You know what I mean? Like, I was so nervous for the final. Um, but you could just see the players were playing. For, like, Peter Steph, 28 tackles. Like, for me, that particular game, for me, is going to affect him for the rest of his life. He put his body through a hell. And for me, it was just incredible. See our story. Everyone's story. Uh, Cheslin Colby's. Uh, Mampimpi, all of them, all of them have got such an incredible story and a personalized story that I think, I, I don't think anyone could have beaten us, even by one point. Uh, forget, what is your future? For me, what, if you, if you could do anything, what kind of stuff would you be doing in rugby? Would you just do rugby full time? I, I don't know where I'm going to take my content. I don't know where I'm going with it. I think I'm going to take a little break at the moment and then probably carry on my TikTok, go to URC stuff. I would love to be like a pundit. I think if I was there, I think, look, Rugby is in a place where the marketing in rugby is poor. I'm going to be completely honest. It is really bad. Advertising wise, they need more characters in there, giving their hot takes, giving opinions, making people talk about rugby in a more controversial way, but not too far. And I think that's where my niche is. I can take that and I can say things that I think people bite onto and it creates conversation. That's where I want to go. I want to be that pundit. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, do, I mean, yeah. I do, I do, I do a lot of sport. Uh, I do a lot of content with uh, Squidge Rugby. Um, uh, okay. with URC, which is pretty fun. Uh, and I met the rugby guy. He's got he's he's been doing a lot of stuff as well, rugby guy. Uh, but you yeah, we yeah. need to create a lot more content, a lot more content in rugby. Uh, and, and going back to the World Cup, uh, did you go to any of the games? 
I didn't. I was, I was stuck in England. Um, I I was meant to go out with uh, the break time podcast I have, but it, it kind of just fell through last minute. So I stayed at home, did all my content from home. But yeah, I, I didn't get to go. I was gutted. I was gutted. To be honest, did you think England was going to go all the way? Did you believe England could win it? I don't know. When I, when I looked at it before, I wanted England to go far. I knew that their pool stage on the side was very easy. They could get to the semis, no problem. And they got to the semis and got knocked out. So I think England finished where they were meant to finish. They were they weren't going to go further after beating us. Like playing South Africa in the semis, they were going to win it. Let's be completely honest. Um, but yeah, I think England got a lot further than I wanted them to. So yeah, I think they they did they excelled their expectation. All right. So, uh, t- so actually, tell us what you do for your day job. Like, like I, I've got a, I, I hear you got quite a normal day job. Like because we thought I thought you just do content the whole day. No, I um, I just do like managing. That's all I do. Just yeah, just simple managing. Uh, nothing spectacular. Just the simple. Nothing crazy. So, did you have any? Um, did you have any South Africans approach you uh, while you were creating your content? Yeah, I've, I've been. I spoke to quite a few South Africans when I went on Saturday. Um, there's people that are contacting me always saying like, "Oh, it'd be great to meet you." Is when I did that massive prank. Everyone was like, "Can you come to Waterfront? Can you come to this? Can you come to this?" I was just like. I'm not in South Africa, but like I had to play to the narrative a little bit. But yeah, it was good. Um, South African fans, like they are passionate, and like you said before, they are they're, they're a country that have got a lot more problems behind it. And when they come to rugby, they unite. It doesn't matter who you are, they unite. And it's beautiful to see an England fan. So I just want to get that across. It's, it's so nice to see the passion and the scenes in South Africa at the minute. I mean, wow! Like the passion and the way they're celebrating is just it's crazy. I wish I could be a part of it. I wish I was in Cape Town. There is one thing I have to say. Most of our problems as South Africans started when the English came onto our shores. But hey, that's another history lesson on its own. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. joking. Okay. If you, if you, so you say you might be coming to Cape Town in December, right? Yeah. It's not I'm official. Sure it's not official, but we're well, planning on it. I think you should come through. We'll have an absolutely great time. We could, uh, if Sia's in town, I'll introduce you to Sia. Uh, who's your favorite South African rugby player? No, I Eben, Eben Esbeth called me out. I'm going to say Eben Esbeth. Did he call you out? Yeah, he called me out. What What did he say? It's not, it's, it's an article. Search it up when you get some time. He, he calls me out and just says like I'm his biggest fan. It was on a page. Um, but yeah, Eben Esbeth called me out and then I responded to him. And yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's, it is articles in your country. If you read up about it, it's uh, yeah, pretty wild. All right, do you have any last things you want to say? Oh, tell us who's your, your favorite rugby player in the world. In the world. Okay, I do like Ardi Salbert. I like what he's about. He's just got World Player of the Year. Oh, he's probably my favorite. Uh, what a guy. But yeah, Ardi's, Ardi's the guy. If there's one player you could have in the Springbok team, who would it be from a different country? Whoa, that's a good question. That's an absolute... I think Dupont, you... I think Dupont can walk into any team in the world. And I love Faf. I love Faf. But Dupont can walk into any team. Sever, like him and Sia are such good friends. Them playing together would be immense. Uh, and there's something about yeah. um, um, Oto- Otoje. Um, for me, he's got some incredible flair. Uh, uh, what's his name? Sorry, the black guy from the English. The, what's he that? The, yeah, yeah. Um, Mar- Mario Otoje. But I thought as oh. African, you would want Mario yeah, you, you guys don't like Mario Tojo. I thought you guys don't like him. Like, no, 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 you're right. he's a player. no. The reason why it's more of a rivalry. The guy is a great player. He's a beast. Like, come on, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have him yeah. any day. Like, he's a beast. He's an absolute beast. Uh, well, yes. No, no, I'm happy with my team. Who else would I have? No, no, I'm happy with my team. Uh, what do you think about only one player in the dream team from for Springboks? It was just one player. What do you think about that? Disrespectful. I think it's disrespectful. After they won the World Cup, I think it's crazy. How how are you getting one player to win the whole world team of the year? It's just crazy to me. I'd have about six or seven South Africans now. Or or, or will I? That's the question. Oh, okay, let's see. All right, here it goes. I, I, I want you to try and sing this particular song. Repeat after me. See if you can get it right. You ready? Right. I don't know what you just said. But- what is it? What, what does it mean? What does it mean for? It's a song. It's, it's, it's a song. It's a song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're 
<laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, so in South Africa, since Sia joined the squad and has had a lot more people yeah. of color, there's something called Ikwijo, which is a, a song that people have been singing and everyone's trying to learn it. And my dream one day is to have an entire stadium uh, singing the song. I was there in France versus South Africa. There was about 75,000 French people and only like 3,000 South Africans. And I wanted all of us to be able to sing it. If I could have a dream, this is yeah. the song I'm able to sing. Um, Tina siya zala nama zumbe hoye. So for me, it's called Mdana Gama. It's a zumbe Mdana Gama zumbe hoye. Okay. I like it. Okay. So try it, try it, try it, try it. Are you ready? What do you, what, hey, I got a question for you actually. Yeah. Ra yeah. What do you think of the Razzie song? The whole Razzie, oh, oh, Razzie, Razzie. That's I a would, better one. That's would, a tune. Incredible. That's incredible. Okay, sing it. Sing that one. I think you're going to struggle with mine. Sing it. Go. <clears throat> okay, sing it with me. Let's do it together. How about that? Uh, 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 you sing it first and I'll learn it. <laughs> I want to see. How does it go? You know you know what it is. You know what it is. Good. Okay. Stop, okay. Stop, stop. Good. How's it going? In your hands. Hey, 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 hey. In your hands. Hey, hey, in your hands. Okay. I think by now you should be able to sing our national anthem. Since we are the champions, you should be able to learn our national anthem. Are you ready? I will make I'll make a deal with you. I will spend the next couple of days learning the anthem, and I'll send okay. a video out to you, and we'll and I'll, I'll okay. sing the anthem for you. How about that? Right, it's been a pleasure yeah, chatting with you. Uh, uh, absolutely looking forward to it. When you come into Cape Town, give me a shout. We can hang out, do a bride, take it to the township, I'll take it to Nyanga, I'll take it to the Cape Flats, I'll take it to all the places of the list that people gave you. How about this? Oh, no, no. How about this? When you do come, we tick off all the lists and take a picture of every single destination that they said you must go to. With me, you're safe. Don't worry. There's nowhere in this country you can go that you're not safe with me, buddy. <laughs> awesome, man. I look forward to it. Let's do it. I'm ready. Cheers, buddy. Well, guys, an absolute pleasure chatting to this incredible human being. He's actually nicer than I imagined. He's very cool for an English person, you know? He, he, should, he can take all the golds <laughs> and diamonds. Thank you so much to Light Lounge Production. You guys are the best. Look at this incredible place. If you ever need a place to do a podcast, come right here. They're the best in the business. Booyah.